Hi. That's enough. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regame Zidicon video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD because they have finally given an update to the security issues which CTS Labs have discovered. Short answer well, they're going to be patching all of it, and there is going to be no performance loss whatsoever. Then we're going to move over to Futuremark, as they have shown off a very impressive ray tracing demo. We'll get to that in a second. And then we're going to finish the video off with Microsoft and machine learning for games, where the company hopes that it will not only improve graphical fidelity, but also be able to provide us more realistic AI opponents. But with that said, let's start things out with CTS Labs. So CTS Labs allegations against AMD have been the cause of a lot of controversy in the tech industry, and there are a number of reasons behind that. Perhaps crucially, just the 24 hours head start that AMD were given by CTS Labs to even begin to investigate the claims made against their hardware. The second issue, and perhaps the most obvious, is that while these flaws did eventually turn out to be genuine, well, there was kind of a couple of problems actually with that. The first is that it was with as media's hardware, which of course was not only found within AMD's uh, Ryzen setup, but also in various Intel motherboards and even various uh, PCIe uh, to USB controllers. But in addition to that, that you actually required administrative access to the system. So this is not like a security flaw such as Meltdown, where you know an attacker could remotely and maliciously run code. Instead, this would require administrative level access. So people could essentially liken it to saying, well, yeah, Windows security is absolutely crap. I mean, all someone needs to do is know my username and password, and they can do pretty much whatever I want with my system. It's like, really? You don't say. Anyway, uh, suffice to say, AMD have eventually responded to this, and each of the key vulnerabilities can be patched via a firmware update through the BIOS, which will result in no performance impact whatsoever. So we have Master Key, PSP Privilege Escalation, Rise and Fall, and Fallout, as well as Chimera, all being resolved very soon. I'm going to read out a key couple of quotes from AMD's Mark Papermaster. AMD has rapidly completed its assessment as it in the process of developing and staging the deployment of mitigations. It's important to note that all the issues raised in the re research require administrative access to the system, a type of access which effectively grants the user unrestricted access to the system and the right to delete, create or modify any of the folders or files on the computer, as well as change any settings. Any attacker gaining unauthorized administrative access would have access to a wide range of attacks at their disposal well beyond the exploits identified in this research. Further, all modern operating system enterprise quality hypervisors today have many effective security controls such as Microsoft Windows Credential Guard in the Windows environment in place to prevent unauthorized administrative access that would need to be overcome in order to affect these security issues. And he also adds that on March the 12th, 2018, AMD received a communication from CTS Labs regarding research into security vulnerabilities involving AMD products, and once again, less than 24 hours later, the research firm went public on its findings. So what are my thoughts regarding this whole situation? Well, honestly, it's just messy no matter which way you slice it. And whether CTS Labs completely disappears now that AMD have responded, or whether the company are going to continue to push this, who knows? We'll just have to watch this space. I will say, though, from the perspective of, as not only a customer, but also a member of the press, I am very, very, very impressed with how AMD have handled all of this, considering that, once again, they've had essentially zero time at all to not only analyze the situation, but also to be able to respond to the situation and create patches to the, to the actual flaws, it's just amazing to me. I mean, what we're looking at here is once again, zero performance impact whatsoever, and the fact that they're gonna have to fix it out in just a couple of weeks. It's very, very, very awesome. And of course, from the perspective of like data center customers as well, it's certainly a feather in AMD's cap, the fact that they can respond to these security issues. And if anything, the ironic thing is, it's actually making AMD look really good in this situation, I have to say. So, um, yeah. It, it, if it was stock manipulation, AMD certainly did get impacted in the short term, but most 
uh, most stock analysts pretty much said, you know, give AMD the benefit of the doubt at the moment. They've had zero time to actually respond to the claims and allegations made against them. See if this is actually a genuine issue. And if it is a genuine issue, find out whether AMD can do anything about this. And of course, now AMD stock is starting to rebound over the past several hours because now, of course, information of this has started to hit the street. And well, it's just turning out pretty sweet for AMD. Next up, we have an update to the ray tracing situation. So you may, of course, be aware that NVIDIA, Microsoft and AMD are working keenly with developers to essentially bring ray tracing to games development. And the idea behind ray tracing is to bring more accurate reflections, lighting, shadows, and just in general overall improved realism to games. Now, of course, up until recently, the technology to actually run ray tracing in real time has been just not there. In a movie, it's not too big of a deal because if a scene takes 30 minutes or a couple of hours to render just a few frames, that's not really a big deal after all. Blockbuster movies have a set time schedule they need to be released, yes, but that's all calculated within the rendering time. But if you're trying to run this on a game for real time gameplay, well, that's a completely different story altogether. You've got just 16.66 milliseconds if you're targeting 60 FPS and 33.33 milliseconds if you're targeting 30 FPS. So in short, we're only just starting to get to the point where ray tracing is becoming a viable option. Now I'm certainly gonna be doing an in-depth video, I'm at about halfway through actually, on producing a video on how ray tracing works and the future of computer graphics. And yes, it's pretty awesome. My, not just my video, I mean ray tracing in general. But to that end, Futuremark have released a demo and there's a couple of key takeaways here. The first is that it looks very good. I mean, just damn. And the second key takeaway is it's actually running on current generation graphics hardware. Just to reiterate, this is not running on, say, Volta. This is running on current generation GPUs, which does lend some positivity to the idea that, you know, we might not be screwed if you own, for example, a Pascal GPU or a Vega GPU for at least games that are going to be coming out over the next year or so. Futuremark have released a quote on their official blog, link of course in the video description. Ray tracing is not a new technique, but until recently has been too computationally demanding to use in real-time games. With modern GPUs, it's now possible to use rasterization for the most rendering and smaller amounts of ray tracing to enhance shadows, reflections and other effects that are difficult to achieve with traditional techniques. Our DXR demo runs on real time on current GPU hardware and because it builds on existing methods it will be relatively easy to implement into our DirectX 12 game engine. We are proud to be one of the first developers chosen to work with DirectX ray tracing excited about the opportunities for this new appy and we are happy to announce that we will be using DirectX ray tracing in the new 3D benchmark test that we hope to have released towards the end of the year." End quote. And finally, Microsoft and machine learning. Some people will roll their eyes when they think of machine learning. They believe it's, you know, for self-driving cars or perhaps for training neural networks where they learn how to predict your shopping algorithms or something like that. But in reality, machine learning is going to be the next evolution of video games, not just for the graphic side of things, but for artificial intelligence as well. What we have, of course, is two inherent components to deep learning and machine learning. The first is training. That is, you're actually training the machine to do a certain task. That is the most complex part. It's the part that requires the most comp computational power. The second part is inference. That is essentially being able to run what has been learned on lesser hardware. To that end, Microsoft have created DirectML and WinML, which are pretty obviously aimed at gaming oriented functions. Perhaps one of the most impressive demos that we've seen thus far is Seed, which is posted by Microsoft of an experimental development which is happening at Electronic Arts. And the video shows how an AI player trained by observing the input of real player behavior would do facing off against a traditional bot. Now the traditional bots of course use classic behavior based AI. And the AI player prioritizes the obvious things. Is its ammo running out? If so, it needs to get more resources. It needs to preserve its own life and generally work towards the goal of protecting a certain area. 
We also see machine learning for improved visual quality, and this is based upon an NVIDIA AI, AI excuse me, upsampling demo. What we would have in theory is a game rendered at lower resolution and then upsampled. Now, of course, the idea of rendering something at a lower resolution and then upsampling it would be to reduce the pixels rendered originally and thus save performance. However, most likely the upsampling, at least for now, would be so costly it would pretty much rule out the purpose for gaming. What it could, however, do would be more for video, which could perhaps be better for, say, cloud-based gaming. So it could perhaps have a lower quality stream, say 720p or 1080p, and then be upsampled in your home. This could perhaps reduce latency, at least in theory. Finally, Microsoft also envisions mean of machine learning for the creation of game assets and development. So one of the things that they actually reported was how the company behind Quantum Break, Remedy, utilized AI when it came to facial animations. And indeed, about 80% of the in-game facial animations, such as motion and speech, were generated by artificial intelligence. This could also help sculpt massive worlds as well, with perhaps the AI being able to, let's say, put together things which normally a programmer or perhaps even a visual artist would normally do, such as, let's say, creating trees and foliage or perhaps uh, helping to paint the realistic aesthetics of, let's say, the interior of a log cabin. And it could do that, in theory at least, by looking at several thousand images of a log cabin and then putting together a, re a reasonable facsimile of a log cabin based upon certain conditions and criteria that a member of the team would type in. So, for example, it might put in the dimensions of it, how run down, how dilapidated it would look, is there any key characteristics, for example, would the log cabin have undergone fire damage, that type of thing. The biggest issue with this, and the concern, of course, is pretty simple. It might cause issues with employment within the game's industry. But how all of this works in the biggest scheme of things, we just don't know yet. Full disclosure. I'll admit that deep learning, machine learning, neural networks and so on was not something I was necessarily keenly interested in until fairly recently. It was only in recent conversations with Neil Trevor and actually realising how cool this stuff is that I started to really start to research this. And honestly, I think from a game's playing perspective, the idea of having a more natural AI is going to certainly be, it's going to be awesome. I mean, whether that's for multiplayer games or whether that's to create more realistic, say, guard patterns in the next stealth game, for example, Metal Gear Solid 6 or whatever, it's pretty damn awesome. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm going to quickly say, once again, I know I keep banging on about this, but I really want to make this abundantly clear. I'm not going to be disappearing, but for one, um, but in one week, I'm going to be flying out to Seattle. So I will be producing content, and I'm going to have content which is essentially pre-recorded that Amy's going to be uploading while she's gone, but my content will be slowing down a little bit. I will, however, be doing vlogging, so if you're interested in seeing my mug on screen, well, you know. Uh, you can also, if you're in the Washington slash Seattle slash whatever area, then by golly gosh, we can meet up if you want. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what my schedule is going to be. I've already had a couple of people messaging asking if we can meet up, and I've said, yeah, sure. I don't necessarily if I'll have those meetups on camera because of privacy reasons and stuff, but, you know, I don't know. But if you do want to meet up, you can email me. That is paul, uh, paul at redgamingtech.com, and we can figure something out. Um, with that, we'd be going to, like, some video game stores or whatever. You know, we can kind of chill. But with, whatever that's, but with that said, wow, I really can't speak today. But with that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, give me internet cookies, and I shall see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.